Good morning, World Outreach Church. Coming to you live again. And uh, hopefully I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for some of you to join on. This has uh, been a uh, quite an adventure trying to find a different location that looks appealing to everyone. And uh, this morning... I am outside the church displaying, displaying the doors. We had a little glitch in the system, but I think we're back. So, uh, Susan, good to have you. And I, I think I see some other people. Is that, I'm not sure who's there. So just let me know who's there. And I'm just trying to read this thing. I may have to move inside, guys. I keep losing service here for some reason. Hey, good to see you. Miss Sharon, good to see you. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, we've lost connection a couple of times just for a second. Is it all right on your end? Uh, let me know how it's coming across. And... Uh, So, good to you anyway. We have seven people with us, so just keep on coming. Amy, it's good. Okay. If it gets too bad, I'll just move it inside the building. But I wanted to show you the, the paint job behind me of the... We just had another glitch, but I guess we're going to keep... We're going to go through it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, praise the Lord. Jim, it's good to have you. Chris, it's good to have you. It's cutting out, Amy is saying. It's cutting out. So, if it does it one more time, I'm going to do a transition into the building, I think. Because I'm standing outside on the front porch of the church, trying to pick up the internet inside the building, and it may be a little issue. So, let's just see how long it stays good. Lord, let this internet service stay good today. In Jesus' name. Hey, Susie Fireson. I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal. If it glitches out for just a minute, I'll pause every time it does that. And then I'll come back and talk. Okay. So it's good to have you guys just waiting around for a few more to sign in. Uh, God is good. We had a good, powerful service last night. I hope you were able to tune in. Um, hello, Joy. Uh powerful service last night just a good uh, boy I just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit and I had another glitch but I paused so we're good we're just gonna have little blips in there and if it does it's all right we'll just keep going I wanted you I'm gonna step out of the way I wanted you to see the door uh, some of the young ladies in the church painted the door for Easter and it's kind of kind of neat so we're excited and appreciate it so, uh, anyway, it is good to have all of you. Uh, Joy and Savannah are listening. Amy, really good. <laughs> Jackie, good to have you. I I'm having a glitch every few minutes in here. Uh, it's just like a, a two, three second where it shuts off. And as long as we can keep talking, I'm just going to pause when that happens. And if you, um, if it gets too bad, just let me know. Type in there, hey, and I will, uh, I'll move this camera midstream connected to each other. It is good to have you, though. I just thought we'd do something different and show the outside of the building. And uh, anyway, we've got about 17 of you watching. We're going to start in just a couple of minutes. Just kind of text to remind people to, to join in and... Uh, if they will, Lord, just let us have a good connection. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> well, let's pray and we're going to get started. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I hope this will be a word of encouragement for you. I feel like it is for me, that's for sure. Uh, every day, um, I feel like these aren't my words, they're his words. And... Uh, Oh, thank you for loving the hat, Amy. I, someone that cares about me gave it to me. 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> I appreciate you and Shannon. Um, but uh, let's pray, and we're going to get started. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would uh, minister today your word, that you will touch us, God, that we'll be alive in you, that your word will strengthen us, that your word will hold us strong in you, Father. And we thank you for it. Bring it alive, God, in Jesus' name. And if you're just tuning in, I saw a couple more Vicki Howard and uh, uh, Melissa coming on. If, if it glitches out, it's coming right back. I'm just, yeah, this is terrible. Uh, how bad is it on your end, guys? That you got to have to tell me because I, it's I can handle it on my end, but I don't want to mess you up. Are you just keeping it going, or should I move? Someone tell me. So I'm watching for someone to respond. I got a thumbs up from Christy Smith all the way from Texas. Good to have you, Christy. But someone let me know if you can handle the glitches in the internet connection. Are you coming right back up? I hope you don't have to start over. Keep stopping every few seconds. Okay. Should I move back in the building or should we just continue where we're at? Someone let me know. I'm just reading the notes. I know there's a little delay getting to you. I think right now it looks like it's solid, so we may go ahead and try to get started. <clears throat> I'm just waiting on you guys to tell me, and we'll roll. Anyway, we had a good service last night. The Spirit of God, I'm waiting on your answers to the Spirit of God. Okay, keep on where you are. Okay, Jackie, too, continue. Here we go. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to start with this. Brian Palmer, good to have you, my friend. Uh, I want to start in the book of Psalms, chapter 18. I want to go back there, and this is the Passion Week, so we're going to go to the works of Jesus, what went on, and we're going to just cover a couple specific things. But if you hear cars and things passing, it's because I'm out in the front of the building. But Psalms 18, and what I want to say is this is a scripture for posturing. If, with what's going on on the news right now, with what's going on in our society, the, the fear reports, the, all the junk that's happening, I still believe the church of Jesus Christ, by declaring the blood, is making a shift on this thing. But of the Lord, there's, there's, you still deal with some issues. And I believe God has heard the cry of the church. I believe he's making a turn on this virus. But today I'm watching the news just for a little while, and, and there is a whole brand new wave of attacks has come to hit the, uh, the federal government in every direction. It's like they've taken their eyes off the needs of the people and put them back on themselves. And so this really gets frustrating and irritating. And it can be real uh, strong in your heart to lose your posture Okay, missing almost everything you're saying. It keeps cutting out. Uh, when it's cutting out, I'm not talking. So uh, I hope we're all right. Okay, hang with me. I'm moving. We're going to make a So we're live moving the camera. So if I can get my wife out here to help me, if she's listening, maybe Sister Tammy can help me get repositioned here. Because outside we're losing the internet signals. So just bear with me, guys. I'm going in the sanctuary, baby. Okay. I feel like one of those guys that's doing the live walking around. So um, I'm going to reposition us. Just hang with me. We're in the building. Okay, thank you, we still have 19 of you, nobody fell off. Sister Tammy, if you can grab my Bible for me and water, I appreciate it. Um, okay, we're back in the sanctuary, we should have good service here, and I was trying something special and different, but it just didn't work, and so I just decided, let's just start over. So here we go, we're getting ready, uh, and uh, Sister Tammy is bringing all my goods from outside, I'm glad she's here, so... Um, and baby, if you give me my water, I'd appreciate it. Okay. And Tammy, the word I was looking for was posturing. We got it. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to move my camera a little bit. 
and uh, we're ready to roll. Okay, I was speaking to you about posturing in this time we're in because uh, your posture is vital. You know, when I was a young man, I played football. And uh, hey, Ash, I, when I was at Christina, I was a young man, I played football. Um, in high school, I weighed about 175 pounds. Oh, boy, those were good days. But, uh, uh, but uh, here's something that happened. Um, I would go up against guys that were much larger than me. They were uh, maybe heavier, uh, and they were quite shocked, not bragging on me, but quite shocked that I could stand my ground and even drive them back because I was smaller in them in, in uh, weight-wise. But what they didn't realize is I positioned myself in a spot, a way that, uh, that they could not push me back. They, they could not uh, stop and drive me back because my posture was such as I'm dug in and I'm not moving. I refuse, I'm done, I'm not moving. My feet were dug in, my cleats were dug in. I went low to the ground so they couldn't get me up high and knock me back. And in that posture, I could take large men, young men, that may outweigh me by 70, 80 pounds, and they couldn't move me because I was solid as can be. And it was all about positioning, posturing that, that I stepped into. Well, I want to start with this. We have to, as a church, posture ourselves to be unmovable. And this is a scripture that I've shared three times this week, and I'm going to read it quickly and then move on to Jesus and the, uh, the washing of the feet in uh, John uh, chapter uh, 14 and uh, John chapter uh, 13. But it says in Psalms 18, this has been my favorite scripture for many years, and I didn't know why. I just love the scripture. But today I really understand why. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my strength in whom I will trust. He's my buckler or my shield and the horn of my salvation in my high tower. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine times he says, it's mine personally. And so when you posture yourself it, amongst all the fear, anxiety, worry, frustration, anything that go on, you say, I will love you, Lord, because the Lord is my strength. He's my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, the one in whom I trust, my a shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. Now, this is the part that I never read before. Hi, Katrina and Sister Kim, I, and I'm applying it to today. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me, and the snares of death prevented me. In my distress... I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he heard me out of his temple. My cry came before his ears, and then the earth began to shake. And what I'm telling you about posturing church is this. We must come to a place in our lives, in this season and time. It's easy to snap tomorrow. It's easy if, if, if they say, hey, you're self-quarantined now for another three weeks. If they made that announcement, they haven't, but if they made that announcement... Many are going to start going into panic modes. Many are going to go into a fear. If money happens to get cut off, many will just start flipping out. But those that say, my strength is not in man, my strength is not in money, my strength is not in uh, the situation around me, but my strength is in God. He is my rock, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. And I want to say this to you. This is the position the church must take, and it's the position that Jesus Christ took. So I want to go to John chapter 13, John chapter 13, and I want to say this, 
that Jesus was about to enter into the hardest week of his life. You think uh, positioning ourselves um, where you have people come against you when you're in ministry, but Jesus knew they're not just coming against me. The darkest hour for Jesus was coming to pass to the resurrection He had to go through that which was dark. I hope you're getting that. To get to the resurrection, he had to go through a darkest moment. And that seems to be the case many times because it's in the darkest moment where we find ourselves completely needing God. And it's in that darkest moment when you're pressed, we find out who are you really trusting in. If you're trusting in the arm of your strength, you might find that you're going to fall. If you're trusting on the arm of the government, you might find that they fail. If you're trusting on the arm of somebody else, and God is saying, I want you to trust in me. Position yourself in me, and if you do, you'll make it through the other side victorious. I hope you're getting that. It's stirring my heart. So Jesus knows, um, shortly after this moment, and I'm just going to go back, he's He's with the disciples. It's the Passover, and uh, uh, they're having the Passover and getting ready to to eat the supper, to go to the garden, to be betrayed, uh, to be abandoned. After abandonment, think about this. Jesus is going to the darkest hour of his life. He picks three of the strongest guys, three of the strongest ones, Peter, James, and John, and he says, hey, I want you guys to come pray with me. You know, my heart is sorrowful even unto death. This is a terrible time for me. And so he goes over by a rock somewhere and starts crying out to the Father. Oh, Father, if possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And he goes back for encouragement from his guys. And they're sleeping. He just poured his heart out and said, man, this is my toughest hour. And they went to sleep on him. You see, in our toughest hour, people that we think should be our strength may just go to sleep. (laughs) There are times in our lives where we have to do it alone. But alone doesn't mean alone. If your strength comes from God. And I'm sure, you know, we know Peter, James, and John, they all went and ministered and Jesus loved them and he wasn't mad and all that good stuff. But he understood loneliness. He understood abandonment. He understood carrying it by himself. He understood suffering. He says, I'm going to go. They're going to drive nails in my feet and hands. And nobody's there to really encourage me on this journey. Nobody. I've got nobody. Up till now, I've had 12 disciples. Up till now, I've had uh, uh, so many people around me, 5,000, thousands around me, surround me. His whole ministry had people everywhere. But when it came to the hardest part, they're all gone. He had to do it alone. He had to carry the cross alone. He had to go be beat alone. He had to be nailed and hanged on the cross alone. So how did he do it? Some say because he was the son of God. No, he was limited to the flesh and he functioned in the spirit. He was in all points tempted like you and I are. So he felt what you felt. He feels what we feel. He goes through what we go through. So that's what Jesus did. He realized, wow, in my darkest hour, I've got to go this by myself. If he hadn't postured himself, positioned himself in the right place, he would have never made it to the cross. Can you imagine? He's carrying the cross every step. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my high tower. He's the one that I will trust in. He's the one that I will focus on. He's the one that will carry me. He's the one that will make me get to the cross. He's the one that will allow me to finish the work. He's the one that will raise me from the dead. I can do this, God, because you're with me. Are you understanding? You can do this because he's with you. You don't have to know the full outcome. You don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. You just have to know who's with you and who's holding tomorrow. Position yourself. Psalms 18. 
read that and apply it and say, God, every day I apply your word to me. Can I read it one more time? I'm just excited about it. (laughs) Here we go. I love thee, O Lord, because you are my strength. You're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. You're my God, my strength in whom I trust. You are my buckler, my shield, my tower, the horn, the power of my salvation. You're my high tower that I can hide in. When death encompasses me and men make me afraid, I can rest in you. (laughs) Come on, give the Lord a hand. I love that. Okay. So now we're in chapter 13 of the book of John. I had to establish where Jesus is coming from. And I believe he's coming straight from this position that he is declaring, okay, it's a dark time coming, but I can handle it. It's a dark time coming, but I can handle it because I'm not doing it on my own. God is with me. Didn't he say to you and me, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? That's his promise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness, I would not want to go through what this world is going through without Jesus by my side. Just the secret place, the place of praying, the place of worshiping, just feeling his presence is transforming. And it empowers you to say, it doesn't matter. I can make it through because I'm postured. No one's pushing me over. No one's going to make me fall because I'm trusting in God. Some men trust in horses, some chariots, but I will trust in the name of my God. Okay, I'll slow down. Chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them to the end. Supper being ended, listen closely, this is powerful, and the devil having now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. Jesus, knowing he was positioned, he knew God is on my side. Even though the guy that's going to sell him out is sitting at the table and the one that's going to deny he even knew him. Imagine this, your lead guy denies he even knows you. Huh. The one that you prophesied into about his life denies he even knows you. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to his hands and that he was come from God and he went to God, he rose from the supper table. He laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after he poured water into a basin, he began to wash the feet of the disciples and wipe them with the towel wherein he was girded. And he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, Lord, you're not washing my feet. Peter was still stuck in what he could see in the natural and understand in the natural. And Jesus was saying, I'm trying to transform your mind, Peter. There are natural things, but there's spiritual things. And when there's spiritual, always trumps the natural. I hope you're hearing me. So he goes on, he washes their feet, and... Uh, I want to go to um, verse 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again, he said to them, Do you know what I've done? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for I am. If then your Lord and your Master have washed your feet, you ought also to wash the feet of each other. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Verily I say to you that the servant is not greater than the Lord, his Lord, neither he that sent greater than he, he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. What he was saying is, church, we got to wash each other's feet. Now, that may not be a literal washing, but it means to humble ourselves, to esteem others better than ourselves, to strengthen the arms of each other, to respect and to recognize the gift of God inside of each individual beside ourselves, to hold them up. And if we hold them up, then they will hold us up. That's how the process works. If you spend time holding the arms up in the life of others, God's going to send someone to hold yours up. That's the process of giving and loving your neighbor as yourself. But listen to me close. You have to have strength 
from the posture you're in to handle doing this. Because it's really easy to go up to someone and say, hey, I want to humble myself and wash your feet. Because if in, in the natural, and they, they get all bashful, no, you don't, no, I have to. And you're humbling yourself before them. And literally in that can become a little bit of pride because you're the humble one. You can. I'm just speaking some real truth, guys. But when you go to the person that's sitting at the table that's going to betray you, that's going to sell you out so that you get beat half to death, so that they hang you on a tree and you suffer, and he is the kingpin that's going to bring a load of soldiers to your private prayer meeting and interrupt it, and then he's going to come up to you and call you friend and kiss you on the cheek. And then right in the midst of that, he betrays you. And the worst nightmare has just started because of that man. And you go around the table with your wash basin. And it's easy to wash the feet of John. He laid his head on your breast and he said, oh, I love you, Jesus. It may be even be easy to, to wash the feet of Peter because you know he's going to deny you, but he'll come around. And it might be easy to wash the feet of James and Matthew and Bartholomew and some of the others, but when you come to Judas, that's when it's hard. That's when true humility is there. That's when a true posture is there. When you wash the feet of Judas. Can you imagine it says, the enemy, verse 2, and supper being ended, the devil having now put in the heart of Judas, Simon's son, to betray him. And in that place, Jesus bows down before Judas, washes his feet, and looks up in his eyes. Do you know what Jesus, Jesus had ultimate discernment. He knew he was looking into a guy that was filled with the devil. But he still looked at Judas with eyes of love. Knowing that this guy is going to hurt me more than any human being on planet earth. He's going to cause me to die on a cross. And he was able to say, Father, I can go beyond the betrayal, and I'll wash his feet. It's pretty strong stuff, guys. You know why he could wash the feet of the one that would eventually have him killed? It's because of his posture. Psalms 18, because of his posture. Do you know what a posture, that kind of posture does for you? It gives you a clean heart, clean eyes, it positions you in a place of purity before God. Because you won't let bitterness, you won't let anger, you won't get hurt, you won't let anything get in and stick to you. As a matter of fact, I want to read to you one more scripture and I'm going to close. John 14, verse 30. This is all the Passion Week. Verse 30, John 14. Henceforth, I will talk, not talk much with you, for the prince of this world is coming. Meaning Satan is coming to directly attack me. But has nothing in me. But has nothing in me. Here's something I'm just reading Ashton wrote. Aren't we glad God is God? For he's a loyal father. Do you realize he's still washing our feet? Think about that. Huh, I didn't catch that until I read that post. He's still washing our feet. You see, when we learn to love with the love of God, we position ourselves where we find our strength in the Lord. When the enemy comes, when the prince comes, he'll find nothing in you. He'll look in your soulish realm and say, how can I attack them? He'll look deep and say, how can I attack? And he'll recognize there's no bitterness, there's no anger, 
There's no hurt. There's no jealousy. There's no wounds inside. There's nothing inside that I can grab a hold of. Because Jesus had every right to get upset. He's washing the feet of the betrayer. He's washing the feet of the one that's going to deny he knows him. He's washing the feet of all the disciples that are going to abandon him. He's washing the feet of those that will leave him hang on the cross by himself. How could he do that? How could he go to the cross for a whole world that turned its back on him? Where were they? Where was the leper? Where was Lazarus? Where was the blind man? They certainly didn't appear to be on that mountain. Where were they? They were challenging who he was. He said he could save the world. Why can't he save himself? If you're really the son of God, come off that tree. But because of the posture, he's able from the tree to say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. God's teaching us, guys. Old things that are new. A new commandment do I give to you, love one another. That's what he says. It's hard to love one another. It's hard to wash the feet of each other unless you're postured in the right way. Funny story. When I was young, Caleb's father played football with me. He was a pretty big fella. We had a guy that played football on the team. I remember his name. It was Mahorder. <laughs> what a weird name. And this guy, as I can remember him, was just a round, stumpy guy. I know that sounds crazy. He wasn't real tall, but he was just round and solid as can be, probably 220 or 30 pounds at the time. And he told Caleb's dad, he says, I'm going to just knock Meeks off his block over here. But Dennis knew that I had a good posture. He knew my technique was to not get moved. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I learned. So he told him, he says, there's no way you can do that. You're not going to move that guy. I'm bigger than him. He don't have, he's not going to stand a chance. The whistle blew, and they put me and Mahorder face to face. Now, I looked at him with my natural eye and said, wow, this guy's like a tree trunk. And me, I'm 175 pounds. What am I going to do against such a big person? I never said that at all. I never thought for the single second, he's going to knock me down. I said, David, get your cleats down in and go low and come up hard. Come up so hard that he doesn't know what hit him. The whistle blew and my hoarder came straight at me like a train and I come up underneath him and I hit him with everything in me and that big old boy realized you can't knock this guy over you're not going to drive him out of the way his feet are planted too deep and now I'm bragging on Jesus the enemy can't knock you out of the way if you're postured in Christ Psalms 18 is your psalm for the next coming weeks it's yours that's your posture. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. The horn of my salvation, my high tower. Seven, eight, nine times he said he's mine. I'm going to wrap this up. You can't live off of Dave Meeks' Jesus. You can't live off of Susan Frierson's Jesus. But you can live off of your Jesus. It'll just happen to be the same one. <laughs> Put your feet down deep. Posture yourself low to the ground, almost in the place of prayer. And say, God, you're my strength and my refuge. Doesn't matter what comes our way. We will not be, we shall not be moved. We'll be like the tree planted by the waters. Lord, we shall not be moved. That's who you are. Ha! You can't stand. When the wind blows, 
when the storm rages, when the betrayal comes, when the pain comes, we can't stand unless we have the word burning in our heart and the intimacy to know he is my God. He is my strength. The whole world can fall around you guys. It says like down there says, in Deuteronomy 20, it says 10,000 can come against you from here and there, but they'll fall because it can't touch you. Oh, you are a king's kid. Say that with me. I'm a king's kid. <laughs> oh, I'm, a, I'm not rambling, but I'm just going to say this. I look at Donald Trump's children. They all have attitudes. All of them. And I'm not being negative. I look at them. Their attitude is filled with confidence because they know who their father is. You've seen it. Boy, they attacked that little boy, I don't know, whatever his name is. They've attacked him like crazy. He doesn't seem to be too moved. And all of them, they rise up above every attack because they know who their dad is. Do you know who your dad is? <laughs> his name is Jesus. He's our living example. He is the rock on which we stand. As we said the other day, he's the rock that followed them in the wilderness. And he's the rock that carries you forward. Thank you for being with me today. Tomorrow morning or at noon tomorrow, we're doing communion. So I want you to join with us there. I was sharing we were going to do an outdoor service for Sunday, but we have storms and rain coming, so apparently we won't be, but uh, I believe it's going to be a very special time. Let's pray. Father, thank you for each one that is listening today. Bless them. Strengthen them. Encourage them in your word, God. Thank you for encouraging me. Lord, you're our hope and our fortress. Cover us, God. Lord, help us to walk in your Beautiful, wonderful strength. Help us to position ourselves in an unshakable way, God, that you, Lord, are glorified. And when the ungodly men try to bring fear, we will not fear. When death surrounds us or sickness comes, we will not fear because we find our strength in you. Well, thank you for tuning in today. I love you. Sorry that the outside thing didn't work. We're going to, matter of fact, when I leave, I'm going to go call the cable company and tell them they need to do something with our cable so it'll get a little stronger. I love you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow at noon. And then Sunday morning at 1030, it's going to be a powerful time. Um, and I've got some announcements I think I'll make tomorrow. So come and join us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are children of the Most High God. Love you too, Mary Gilmore and all the rest of you. Thank you for telling me that. Oh, it's good to have all you guys. You are awesome. Take a moment and holler at each other. And um, I'm just going to walk away from the camera and let you guys love on each other for a moment. And I'm going to turn it off in about 60 seconds. God bless you guys. Jackie, good to see you, lady. Love you guys.